Hello everyone, my name is Julie Makani from Mwimbili University in Tanzania, and I'm here on behalf of um, colleagues, patients in Africa, uh, mainly from networks such as H3 Africa, Sickle in Africa, Sickle Gen Africa, and Sickle Charter. I'll be sharing with you our experience um, with regards to the international efforts to expand diversity in genomic data to improve health outcomes. So, I think one of the uh, major discoveries or one of the major ac accomplishments um, in genomics is the completion of the Human Genome Project. And when this was completed in 2003, Dr. Francis Collins from the NIH um, shared um, this editorial, which said that the Human Genome Project is actually just the foundation of a house that looks at genomics to biology, genomics to health and genomics to society. And our interest from the perspective of gene and cell therapy is really focusing on genomics to health. One of the concerns that we had and many colleagues around the world was that in this house um, where the foundation was genomics to um, um, human genome project, would Africa have a room in this house? And because of that, we thought about establishing the human genome, um, human hereditary, and Health in Africa project, H3 Africa, which looked at establishing um, genomic research um, in Africa. There was a lot of skepticism, a lot of concerns, a lot of reservations saying, is Africa really ready to conduct genomic research? So in, 2020, in 2010, uh, more than 11 years ago, H3 Africa was launched. And this was a partnership between the Wellcome Trust, the NIH, and the African Society of Human Genetics, namely Charles Brotimi from the NIH and um, Bogani, the late Bogani Mwayosi from the African Society of Human Genetics. And since then, H3 Africa has been able to demonstrate with huge success that it is possible to conduct genomic research in Africa. If you have an integrated approach, if you invest in institutions and people in Africa, if the funding is adequate, and if you fund for a long period of time. And the impact of this has been seen with establishment of the diagnostic capacity with the path in pathogen genomics with the African set of, as an, and an example of this, the African Centers of Excellence in Genomics of Infectious Disease by, um, led by Chris Happy, as well as looking at how we can strengthen human genome, um, under, our understanding of human genome diversity in Africa. And Ambrose Wonkham, who's the current president of the African Society of Human Genomics, has made a call that it is important for us to sequence at least 3 million genomes across Africa in order for us to contribute to our understanding of human genetics in, in the world. So the question is here, why is sickle cell disease ideal for genomic research in gene therapy? The first is sickle cell disease is a genetic disease. It's a monogenic disorder. It's the first disease or the first molecular disease or the first disease whose molecular basis was described in 19 um, by Linus Pauling. And it is a disease that, despite the fact that it has a single gene mutation, it causes a whole range of um, um, clinical manifestations. Secondly, it is very common. It's estimated that, that between 2010 and 2050, 14 million children will be born with sickle cell disease in the world. That is a lot. And the majority of these children will be born in Africa, about 80% of them. Unfortunately, if you're born in Africa, you stand 10 to 50% chance of surviving to the age of 18. If you're born in the UK and the US, then you stand an 80 to 90% chance of surviving to the age of 18. And we, as people working in sickle cell disease, we as people working in, in health, we wanted to make sure that we address this inequity. The third reason is that there are limited inter interventions for sickle cell disease. Despite the fact that one thing we know is that by newborn screening and um, enrollment of individuals with comprehensive care, we can reduce mortality in the first three years of life by 70%. Unfortunately, the majority of individuals who reach adulthood or, and who reach um, the age of 18 years 
have a poor quality of life and still have an increased um, risk of um, early mortality. And there is no cure for this disease other than with bone marrow transplant or with gene therapy. And so we wanted to work with this condition and we felt that this was an important condition to look at because this was a condition that was amenable to gene therapy. And so when we are asked, why are you working on a genetic disease in Africa? Our response is very simple. It's because of the patients. This is a photograph of Arafa Salim, who is the president and founder of the Sickle Cell Patients Community in Tanzania in 2018, commemorating World Sickle Cell Disease, which is the 19th of June. And this echoes with um, a, 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 a comment by Francoise, who's the Nobel laureate in 2008, where the whole purpose of science is for the benefit of humanity. And in order for us to benefit human, humanity is that if you're working on a disease, you have to have a relationship with people living with the disease. And so what is the approach that we're taking? So we have taken an integrated approach using an acronym called CHARTER. This is the SICL CHARTER, which is a consortium for health advocacy research and training for, Afri um, for sickle cell disease. It was founded in 2011 with five countries, and now it has more than that. The five countries were Ghana, Nigeria, Cameroon, DR Congo, and, and Zambia. And the integrated approach was that we needed to work on four things at the same time. We needed to improve healthcare. We need to make sure that we had advocacy at all levels from the patients, from the public, to high level. We needed to conduct research and we need to train different people at different level in different ways. So in um, 2017, we received funding from the NIH to establish Sickle in Africa. This is a network that consists of um, seven countries now um, and a um, data coordinating center in South Africa and a clinical coordinating center in Africa. We've established one of the largest sickle cell registries in the world. We have at least 13,000 patients enrolled so far. And in the next two years, we intend to enroll 34,000. This will make this one of the largest sickle cell um, registries in the world. We have um, 34,000, which sounds like a lot of patients, but in reality, 34,000 is just a fraction of the 5 million individuals with sickle cell disease in the world and the 3.5 million people with sickle cell disease in Africa. So it, there is a lot more that we need to do to make sure that we reach out and we identify all the patients with sickle cell disease in Africa. The areas that we're focusing on in, in um, sickle in Africa are coordination, data, including ontology, standards of care, research, skills development, sustainability, and working very closely with the sickle cell disease community. Sickle Gen Africa is a network that is part of the H3 Africa Consortium. And this is a consortium that looks at the genetic factors that influence hemolysis and sickle cell disease. So what is the progress in gene therapy for sickle cell disease? In 2017, we were all extremely excited when the first patient was reported to have been cured for sickle cell disease using gene therapy. We immediately got a question from the sickle cell patient communities in Tanzania and many countries in Africa as to how are we going to get access to the cure? We were very gratified or, or, or um, encouraged because countries and particularly governments were supportive of sickle cell disease and said, how can we support you and how can we support you to help patients get access to the cure? In 2019, the um, NIH and the Gates Foundation um, announced in Ethiopia, the African Union, um, a commitment to invest $200 million to find a cure for sickle cell disease and HIV using genomics. In 2020, despite the COVID pandemic, the science of gene editing was recognized by the Nobel um, laureate that was awarded to um, Dr. Manuela and Dr. Jennifer um, recognizing um, the use of CRISPR-Cas9. And since then, there's been a whole range of gene therapy trials that have been conducted and showing really exciting success for, 
curing sickle cell disease using different techniques in 2020, 2021, and 2022. And here I've just put a few examples of the of three different techniques that have been used. Now the question is for us in Africa, how many gene therapy trials are ongoing? And it's really tragic to say that none. There are zero gene therapy trials that are ongoing in Africa, which consists of 80% of the individuals with sickle cell disease in the world. There'll be many reasons that are given to justify why there aren't any gene therapy trials ongoing in Africa. What I would like to do is really look at it from a different perspective and say, can gene therapy trials be done in Africa? And the answer to that is yes. Where can they be done? They're sickle cell centers in many African countries. And here is, is a publication from um, Ambrosonka Metal that outlines the different centers in different countries in Africa that conduct sickle cell disease, um, that provide sickle cell disease treatment, and that are um, providing um, bone marrow transplant or hematopoietic stem cell transplant for sickle cell disease. These are platforms or these um, um, bone marrow transplant units are platforms or are, uh, are units that can be utilized for ex vivo gene therapy. Second thing, are there people who are willing and ready and trained to participate in gene therapy trials? And the answer to that is yes. We have um, individuals at different levels from different um, healthcare um, professionals who have started conducting, who have started training, and who have started participating and preparing themselves for gene and cell therapy for sickle cell disease. We're also very fortunate in Tanzania, Uganda, and many countries in, in Africa to be participating and to be learning from people who are at the top of um, the quote-unquote game with regards to genomics, with regards to bone marrow transplant, with regards to gene therapy, and hematology of the blood transfusion. So the other question that we get asked quite often is, are patients ready? And the answer to that is yes. We've been looking, not just in Tanzania, but in other countries in Africa, we've been looking and identifying patients who are eligible and who would be suitable for participating in gene and cell therapy. We've been able to prepare the patients, to find out what are their concerns, making sure that they have access whilst we're waiting for gene and cell therapy in, in Africa. We want to make sure that they have access to the normal or the comprehensive care that is available. And we're working very closely with the patient community to make sure that we are understanding what are the critical issues that we need to be aware of as, as um, stakeholders. We've also recognized the importance of partnerships. So we as Sickle in Africa, we as Sickle Charter, are looking to establish partnerships and establish donor registries, partnering with the Global Gene Therapy Initiative, with the American Society of Hematology, looking at the Sickle Cell Disease Coalition, particularly the, um, the um, newborn screening, consortium for newborn screening in Africa concept, and then looking to explore with the NIH, both the Cure Sickle Cell Initiative and the Precision Medicine Initiative. Now, the question is, why is it important to conduct gene therapy trials in Africa? It's important because disease is different everywhere. It's diff disease is different in an individual. When you look at the disease phenotype in an individual, it ranges depending on the age of the patient. It ranges from patient to patient in the same environment. When you look at the phenotype of, of sickle cell disease, a single gene mutation, the phenotype is completely variable. When you look at the genotype itself, despite the fact that it's a single gene mutation, there's a whole load of other factors that contribute to the diversity of the genetic expression, the genetic expression of um, sickle cell disease. When we move forward from that, when we look at the human genome diversity, it's very variable. Within Africa, although it's looked at as a homogeneous um, um, continent and homogeneous population, there is considerable variation at the human genome. And this is something that is of interest to um, H3 Africa and the African Society of Human Genetics. 
And then when we look at the environmental and societal diversity, it is very, very diverse. I come from an environment that is predominantly urban, predominantly um, um, educated. And this is something that is not very recognized when you talk about Africa. When you talk about Africa, people often think about Africa and they have a very dogmatic perspective of Africa. And so because of these reasons, we know that their diversity is really important. And if we do not take this into account, we will not be able to target and develop the interventions that are appropriate. The second thing that we need to, do, the second reason why we need to do um, um, genetic research in Africa is because we need to know that it actually works in Africa. So we're conducting clinical research in order for us to describe the hematopoietic stem cells in, in our continent. We need to understand what is the prevalence of genetic factors that may or may not influence clonal hematopoiesis, which we know is a precursor to the increased risk of um, cancers in patients who may have uh, may or may not um, have received um, gene therapy. We also need to understand what are the things that we need to know when it comes to processing genes and cells from our environment. We're really gratified because we've been working with the NIH and the Gates Foundation to look and to explore the opportunities for participating in, in, in research that will develop um, platforms for in vivo gene therapy. And we're working with colleagues to establish mass models and basic science research to look at functional genomics within Africa. And the most important thing is that we are keen, ready, and prepared to participate in gene therapy trials now. The other thing that, um, the final thing um, that we need to look at or why we need to um, conduct gene therapy for sickle cell disease in Africa is that we need to make sure that we develop an intervention that is accessible and is affordable in our populations. And so we need to make sure that we work with governments, we work with health agencies, such as WHO, we work with financing agencies so that we have adequate funds to um, support these endeavors. We work with industry, whether it's Novartis, whether it's about um, um, Pekin Elma. We work with philanthropy, and, and this is a photograph showing um, how the Pierre Faber Foundation has been funding Sickle Cell Disease Center, Sickle Cell Disease Center in Mali. And most importantly, we need to work with the community. So at every point, we're reminded what is important to the sickle cell patient community. So what is the way forward? The way forward really can be encapsulated in these three slides or these three um, images. One and is that it's got to be focusing on patients. With every day that passes, patient suffering, patient death is ongoing. We have to make sure that we provide access to optimal healthcare now to the patients that we know are suffering from sickle cell disease. And we need to make sure that the research for sickle cell disease and finding a cure using gene therapy is conducted in sickle cell disease. In, in sickle cell disease populations in Africa now. I'd like to end with a moment of silence for Kof. Professor Kwaku Ahena from Pong was a champion for sickle cell disease in Africa, and he passed away on the 7th of May of 2022. Thank you very much for listening to me. <laughs>